Hello everyone. In this introduction to C-sharp video, we are going to learn how we can move objects using C-sharp. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really, really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So we are going to learn how we can actually move this object without the use of animation or anything else. We're going to do it purely in a C-sharp script. So we're going to do a couple of different things in here. We're going to move it along, let's say, up and down, left and right, and we're also going to rotate it as well. So let's start by creating a brand new script. So create script, and we'll call this movement. Obviously, these scripts can be called anything you want. There's no set way of actually naming scripts. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the transform of an object to be able to move it. And I'm going to do this inside the update method. The reason I'm doing it inside the update method is I want the movement to happen continuously. I just don't want it to kind of move just once and then that's it. We want it to constantly move. So let's get rid of our start method and annotations. Once again, we do not need them. Now, the way we can get an object to move like this is we can use transform and then we can actually use translate. So capital T, there we go. Now what this will do is it will say transform, we're going to move you in this particular direction. And now we have to declare that particular direction. And the way we can do it is we can say something called vector three dot, and we'll go forward for now. And then we'll do that multiplied by time dot time scale. Now I'm going to explain why we're doing this. The reason we're using something called vector three is because we're dealing in a 3D environment. Think of it as that way. And forward is going to literally be forwards. The reason we also have time dot time scale is because we want the movement to occur real time. We want it to move in accordance with our game time. What is game time? Game time by default should always be one. So think of that as real time. If we were to change the game time to 0.5, everything would move half the speed. So as long as everything is in accordance with the time frame, the time scale of Unity, everything should be fine. So logically, what's going to happen here is whatever object that this script ends up being attached to is going to move forward in a real time. And I'll show you a little bit further in this video how we can further manipulate it. So let's now attach that movement script to this cube that we had a couple of videos ago. And before I actually do anything, I'm just going to remove the animator just so we know there's no animation attached to this. And I'm going to disable that movement script just for a second. So we can see that this cube will do absolutely nothing. However, if we then enable our movement script, it moves. Now that moved incredibly fast, which indicates to me that real time is good, but we just need to control that a little bit more. So we can go into our movement script and after we have time.timescale, we can then multiply that by, let's say, 0.5 one with an F for float and save. So what that will do is it will reduce the time scale one tenth. So if you have one multiplied by 0 0.1, the answer to that is 0 0.1. So we're now moving this object forward 0 0.1. And you don't necessarily even have to deal with vector three or anything to a massive degree with this, because at the end of the day, this will now move 10 times slower than it did previously. Awesome. And obviously you can go even further with that if you want to. You can change that to 0 0.01 and it will move 100 times slower than it did on our first attempt. Cool. So how do we make it move in other ways? Well, that's very simple. Rather than use forward, we want it to move backwards. However, 
we can actually use a cool little way of changing this. And this is very interesting because we can then control everything via a variable. We don't have to change this line of code. We don't need more if statements. So that is a negative. So it will move it forwards, multiplied by timescale, multiplied by negative 0 0.01. Now anything multiplied by a negative would theoretically end up negative, unless of course it was a negative itself. So let's save that. So we're telling it to go forward in a negative way, which would obviously mean backwards. And it does indeed move backwards. So the reason I like to do this is because if we want to move forwards or backwards, we only need one line of code for that. We don't need a forward or backward. Now the same can apply to moving left and right as well. So if we get rid of that negative and change this to vector three dot left and save, our cube will indeed go left. Awesome. So remember, the way this camera is angled at the moment is on an angle. That's why it looks like it's going technically forward. So what I'm going to do just to kind of illustrate this a little better is rotate my camera back to how it should really be and pull it outwards to about there so we can see. So now what will happen is it will indeed look like it's going left. There we go. So I'm sure you guys may have guessed by now, the inverse of that is just putting a negative right there. And pressing play. And it will indeed move right. As I said, this is the best way in many ways to change the direction using less code. Because ultimately we can change this to a variable, like I say, and we can manipulate that variable to be a positive or negative. So even though it says left, if it's negative, it's moving right. So how do we make this go one step further? How do we move it in a rotational way? Same kind of thing. We can say transform dot rotate. And then in brackets, we do this a little differently. So let's say we want to rotate it just on the X. We can say, let's say one on the X, then let's say zero on the Y zero on the Z or Z, and then we have to put something that is relative to the world around us, much in the same way that we have put our time.time .time scale. We need to make sure that this understands to only move within the space relative around it. So we can put space dot world, close bracket, semicolon, and save. So now we are going to move this rotationally on the X. So let's press play and let's enable that script. Cool. And obviously there's so much more you can do with this that there really is. If we change this to one and one, it's going to look a little crazy. Um, but as I think I said in the last video that we did, I really encourage you to play around with all of these things and see what you can create. See if you can get some movement that you're happy with. Cool. So that's how we can move objects without the need for animation all within a C -sharp script. And obviously you can combine all of these things together to create uh, desired effects that you need within C -sharp coding. Uh, if you want to know any more, please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell, like I said earlier, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching guys.